Peace and blessings, family. So today is day three of Women's History Month. And I am a super advocate for women's rights. I'm an advocate for black women all over this planet. This women period. One, because I'm a woman. Two, because I'm a mother of four beautiful daughters. But I understand the value of the woman. And we've been blessed um, through our student minister in New Orleans in the Nation of Islam, Mosque number 46. And he created or compiled a study guide entitled The Divine Value of the Woman. And what he did was he took lectures from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan based on the teachings of um, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad as it concerns the black woman and woman in particular. And so if you go to my link in my bio, you'll be able to download the PDF file for the divine value of the woman. And it's such a beautiful study guide. And to my sisters and my brothers who are interested in understanding the divine nature of the woman, then this is an excellent study guide for all of those who um, want to do more in-depth study. You know, we can study the accolades and the, the history of women all over this planet, especially black women. And we've done a tremendous amount. Um, you know, we're history makers. We're the mother of civilization. Everything came from us. So, you know, yes, that's good. But if we don't understand the value of the woman and the sight of God, then are we really living up to our fullest potential? The nation of Islam, you know, we're not discriminated against or we're not pushed down or suppressed. We're taught that a woman can reach as high as heights as she uh, God allows her to reach as long as we don't degrade ourselves or be other than ourselves in that process. And so, you know, I thought this would be a good idea for those who are interested in studying the woman, the nature of the woman, the value of the woman. And I, you know, I'm not going to do a lot of my own words. I'm just going to read directly from this study guide. So if you can go to my link um, in my bio and there is the links in my bio, there, there is the PDF and you can just download it right now or have it for later. And there are so many beautiful study, um, um, study lessons, the lessons that you can tap into. But today we're going to talk about woman, the self, the second self of the creator. And let me see what page is this on? It's on page seven of the study guide. And I'm going to read directly from this. This is the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Who are you, black woman? Do you really know how valued you are in the sight of the creator? And the Holy Quran, Surah 4, verses 1, there's a very beautiful scripture that reads, quote, O people, keep your duty to your Lord who created you from a single being and created its mate of the same kind and spread from these two many men and women. And keep your duty to Allah by whom you demand one of, one of another your rights and to the ties of relationship. Surely Allah is ever watcher over you. Here, close quote, here the Arabic word nafs is translated as being. Other Quranic scholars translate nafs to mean soul or essence. But if Allah created us from a single essence, what is that essence? How could Allah create man as his khalifa or successor and the essence of that man is not the essence of him who created man. Biblically speaking, you can't say that man and woman are created in the image and the likeness of God and the essence of God is not in you. Why the subject, the limitless, immeasurable value and beauty of the woman? Some women may look in the mirror and think, oh, I am not so pretty. They may not be considered physically attractive. But physical attractiveness is not beauty. I have to say that again. But physical attractiveness is not beauty. That is why I'm teaching on the limitless, immeasurable value and beauty of all women. The beauty of the woman is the matchless beauty of God. This is you on the inside. The Quran says that Allah is not begotten, nor does he beget. 
He is self-created. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches that Allah God in his limitless wisdom and power created himself in triple darkness. And in that, we don't know how long it took him because nothing was there to measure time. God created himself and then studied himself and out of himself, he made the second self. Sisters, you are from Allah God. So that's the end of that reading. Now, I'm going to give you two questions and I and my family chime in, ask me whatever questions and we can have this dialogue, have this discussion. It's not for my sisters in the nation of Islam, but it's also for my sisters of other faiths or who want a better understanding of the divine value of the woman and brothers. Please chime in um, because y'all have lost the understanding or don't even have the understanding or knowledge of the value of the divine value of the woman. That's why she's the most disrespected. She's the most abused. She's the most neglected woman on the face of this planet. So the first question is, why is the black woman valuable in the sight of the creator? Now, as we just read that the black woman, she was made directly from him. He created her in triple darkness. When we bring life onto this earth as a woman, what happens? That, that, that seed is planted in the darkness before we even know that it exists. Something has to happen to the body before we are alerted that there is life that is being created or that is growing in the, inside of us. And when there is a, con when there's conception, when the egg, um, when the sperm meets the egg and it's been proven, you can, you can go to YouTube videos. It shows that there is a spark of light, electricity that is created on the point of conception. And so as life is being created and the electrical impulses is, is coming into side the womb of the woman, then that baby is being created in the darkness. That being is being created in the darkness. And the Bible teaches us that, you know, that we were made in his image and in his likeness, both male and female, and that we are the essence of of God. So that if we are the essence or we are the being of God, then what does that say? That we are the, the direct descendants, not just on a physical perspective, but also a mental and a spiritual. And we are spiritual beings housed in a physical body. So we tell the body what to do. The body doesn't tell us what to do. And so as the second self of God, women, that and coming directly from him, then we can't be nothing but di divine and nothing but sacred. And so if we understood our value and our sacredness and how holy we are and the essence of who we truly are, would we do the things that we do? Would we respond the way that we respond to ourselves and to our sisters and to our families and to our brothers? Brothers, if you understood the nature of the woman, if you reverence the womb that you came forth from, your, your, your mother, would you treat the woman as you treat her? These are some questions that we have to ask ourselves. If we had a relationship, and, and as Christians, we say having a direct relationship or a personal relationship with God or with Christ, if we understood and had that relationship with Christ and, and having that relationship understood the divinity of who we are, or the divinity of who the woman is, um, would we treat her as such? Would we suppress her? Would we degrade her? We, would we abuse her? Just some questions to ask, sister. You know, as we read, our beauty is not just our physical attractiveness, but our beauty is way much more than the physical aspect of who we are. And there's power in our beauty, of course, but there's more power in our spiritual beauty. There's more power in our mental beauty. And when we spend as much time, you know, fixing ourselves up mentally and spiritually to beautify ourselves just imagine the grasp and the power and the magnetism that we have in order to create or bring people unto us if we understood that divine value of who we are. Another question in the study guide is, what is real beauty? Have you ever met someone who is so beautiful on the outside? I mean, she has all the perfect measurements. Her face is flawless. Her skin is flawless. Her skin is 
I mean, everything about her you think physically is flawless. But then when she starts exuding what's on the inside based on her words or her action, then we see that she's she's really ugly, brothers. And and you can bear witness to this. I've heard people say, you know, this beautiful woman, she would be so beautiful, but her attitude is funky. Her attitude is is vile and foul. And at one point in time, I used to be a beautiful woman with a funky, very foul attitude or just angry all the time and not exuding the divine that is in me. And so, you know, or we hang our hat on our beauty. And let me tell you something. I'm 46 years old. You know, my beauty was, I had more beauty physically than I, at 26 than I have at 46 years of age. But I know that I cannot hang my livelihood or hang my hat or hang my power on just the physical attractiveness of the outside of who I am. So I spend a tremendous amount of time working on my spiritual, working on my mental and my emotional. Of course, I'm not going to let the physical go to waste. Um, because this temple is how I, I give, I house my energy so that I may be able to, to give to the world. But my beauty is not just the physical aspect of who I am. We look at the, in the media and what do we see? Um, you know, we, we applaud our sisters by showing their, their, their body and the beauty of their physical body. And the more we, um, they, they expose themselves, the more money that they make, right? And everything that sells, all the advertisements, how is it being sold? Isn't the product is not just being sold for the product itself or the value that it gives, but it also sells the sex, you know, the sexual side, um, the creative side, but it's objectifying um, the most creative part of that being, the physical creative part of that being. And sexual energy is one of the most creative and powerful energies that exist in this universe. Hence, you looking at me right now because I'm a product of that. But if we understood and are able to transmute that particular energy into something that is more powerful than the, you know, the, the, the physical body that returns back to the earth and sew it back into something that is of high nature as opposed to just the low nature, then the things that we create on this planet, the love that we can give, the healing that we can manifest um, will show itself. So real beauty comes from Allah. Real beauty comes from the essence of who he is and that he gives to us. So just just a few, you know, a few questions um, that we can ask ourselves. Why is the black woman valuable in the sight of the creator? And what is real beauty? Not just the physical beauty, but the mental and the spiritual beauty, the creative energy, the creative beauty that created us um, as a as coming directly from Allah. So on this month, as we study Women's History Month, let's not forget to study the, the, the divine value of the woman. And every woman out there who can hear the sound of my voice, know that you are beautiful beyond your physical existence. Know that you are the second self of God and that when he created you in triple darkness, that he chose the best of himself and he struggled to choose the best of himself to bring you into existence. We are the ones that can take an idea and a thought that is manifested by our beautiful brothers you know, in triple darkness as well. And we can take that idea and we can take that vision and we go to death's door to bring that thing to life. That is how powerful you are, black woman. That is how powerful you are, woman, that we can take a thought and we can manifest it on the physical plane. So there is more power than just our sexual or our physical bodies and our attractiveness. So let's again, study the nature of the woman study the divine value of the woman and study the nature of who you are so we can not be other than who, are, who other than ourselves live in a beast life and act in savage but to act as as god created us not as man created us but women of god in a divine woman of god so again, you can go into my bio. There's a link to download the study guide that was created by the educational department, Muhammad's University of Islam Educational Department in New Orleans, Mosque 46. Thank you, Brother Willie, Brother Minister Willie, um, for this beautiful guide, um, especially during this month uh, of, of Women's History Month. 
And again, go to my link, download the PDF file. And in a couple of days, I'll be back with another lesson from this particular study guide. And on today, we're studying woman, the second self of the creator. Peace and blessings, family. And if you have any more questions or you want to reach out directly to me, go into my DMs and let's continue this conversation and, and forward this and share this to anybody who's willing to listen. Peace and blessings, family.